morning. So today at work, I spent six hours finding out that there were a thousand rows missing from the database. And so I finally got a fix done at 440 and needed to deploy it, but the deploy took way longer than I was anticipating. So I'm like standing by my computer, like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I gotta go, I gotta go. Um, so sorry, it took a minute to get that fix out. And now we've got some happy, happy users. And we always like that. Okay, who wants to kick us off for start off? Stand, oh my God, stand up. What did we do yesterday? What did we learn? What light bulb moments did we have? All that good stuff. Recording in progress. Recording in progress. Recording in progress. What did we do yesterday? A lot of JavaScript. You did a whole heck of a lot of JavaScript. What what concepts did we practice in our JavaScript? Like random numbers with the computer. Random, random numbers and arrays. Yep. What else did we use? And if um, do while. Did do while loops. We used math.random for a random number generator. What else? A lot of ifs and else. Yep, we did if statements. I don't think we actually did any turneraries, but we another day. We did do um, inline or statements in our template literals. Um, I think it's it's important to look back at all of the stuff we did, and it's like, yeah, it feels like a whole heck of a lot of JavaScript, but important to touch on, like, hey, we're hitting all of these concepts that we've learned, right? Now we're going into week three of JavaScript, so we've got. Um, all of our for loops and our while loops we're practicing with. We've got all of our functions that we're practicing with. We've got document get element by ID, which is all about the um, DOM and getting HTML to update. We're practicing with our event handlers and making our on, on click work. We're getting practice with if statements and, and conditionals, right? And checking to see if there's a win. Um, we're practicing with our arrays and our multi-dimensional um, arrays. So we've got an, uh, or a nested array, right? We're using our two indices to get in there. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that we've touched on so far. So we've got a whole heck of a lot going on in our um, tic-tac-toe so far. With all of that said, if we read over our code from top to bottom, which is not necessarily the best way to write code, but it's probably the best way to read the code. Or is there any syntax or any questions about what we have done so far? I think if you go through it again, or like just from top to bottom, I'll ask questions about Okay, cool. So let me do a quick read through of that, just so everyone can benefit and hopefully it will be a good starting point for us. So I'm going to share and get rid of this and move you guys over to here. Zoom joke is on me, move you over to here. Okay, so we start at our index.html. Everyone good to see my screen? Yep. Okay, so in our uh, HTML, we've got the standard head tag going on. We just put our tic-tac-toe title um, in there. And then we've got a div ID container. And this container is what we're going to target with our JavaScript and keep on iterating over. Uh, so we put our three buttons into the row, and we've got two attributes on our button. We've got our on click event, which is basically saying, hey, whenever any one of these buttons is clicked, execute this function called button clicked and pass in the event so we know what um, target the event is happening on. And then we go in and we put IDs on all of these so we can differentiate the buttons. And then we use a non-breaking space character. That's what the NBS uh, and P stands for is non-breaking space. Um, and that's just gonna be a space so our button doesn't look like it's empty. And believe it or not, that is all of our HTML. Down here at the bottom, we just do our script tag and link to our script JS and that's where all the magic happens. Any questions on our HTML before we move to our JavaScript? The P where? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, I have no idea why it's not MBS and instead of MBSP, but yeah. Um, the ampersand is what's telling it, hey, we're gonna give you a special encoding. 
the, the name of the character that we want to show up is going to go in here. And then the semicolon at the end says it's the end of that special syntax. Um, you can also do um, some weird things like an M dash, which is like an extended dash. Um, you can do that as literally the letter M, D A S H, and then the ampersand at the beginning and the semicolon at the end. And then you get a long dash. And there are a couple other character uh, encodings that you can do there as well. What's the double one for? The double NBSP. That's just to space it out a little bit more inside of our button so that when a character shows up, roughly that character is the width of two spaces. And so that kind of balances it out. Okay, so let's switch over to our JavaScript. So we've got a whole heck of a lot going in here, but it's easiest to think about this because we have it broken down into functions, right? So up at the top, we've got our board. Our board is, yep, Shantina, you have a question? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I have my, con instead of container, I have mine as um, board. Was that, um, was that, did we change that for a we reason? Did, that I that? Yeah, we did update that because in our script.js, we had a board and then we were putting our board inside of another board, which, okay. which used to be here. And that's not really accurate. We don't have two boards. We only have one board. Okay. So what we did is we ended up putting our all of our stuff in a container. And mm -hmm. then down here, when we document get element by ID, instead of putting it in board, which is really what we're generating up out up here, we put it in container instead. Okay, Th thank you so much. No problem. Okay, so we've got our board. Our board is a multi-dimensional or nested array. When we say multi-dimensional, we just mean that it's taking two coordinates or at least two coordinates, an X and a Y. Um, and, and we know that because whenever we work with anything in our board, we give it the first coordinate, which is gonna be the row and the second coordinate or index, which is gonna be our column. Um, so we've got an array in an array. And then what we do is we put in empty strings here. If it's an empty string, it means that spot is still open. If there is an X in it, it means that the player has put one in there. And if it's an O, it means the computer has put one in there. So we break our file down into our function so we can identify what's going on in each different chunk of code or each different block of code. Because remember, anything inside of curly braces is considered a block of code. So what we're going to do is we start out by saying, hey, we need to create a string that we're going to put all of our HTML into. And we're going to start by creating a div ID board up here. We then have to keep track of what button number we're on. How many buttons have we already created? So we know that's going to start at one because we want our buttons to start at one and go all the way up until nine. Then what we do is we say, hey, come in here, go to the uh, row of board. So basically loop over each array in the board and get each row out of it. Then once we are in each row, go ahead and create a new div class row, right? And what that's doing is it's creating this div here and this div here and the last one as well. Okay, and now once we've got that row created in the div, we want to loop through and get each column out of the row. So that column is going to be whatever value is in this string. And if it's an empty string, it's going to be, and it's going to be empty. So what we do is we say, hey, go add in a button. Every time we hit a new column, we want a button for that. And we still want the button click to happen. And we still want access to the event. But when we get to the ID, the ID is based off of whatever button number we are on. So as soon as it hits this dollar sign curly brace, because we are in this back tick here, it says, hold up you don't actually want the word button num to show up there. You want whatever the value of button num is. And the first time this loop runs, it happens to be a one. And then we do the same kind of syntax here. We say, hey, if column has a value, if there is an X or O up here, go ahead and dump that in. But if it doesn't have a value, or if you don't have a column, go ahead and put in two non-breaking space characters. Now, the reason we don't have this in quotes is because we want the actual value to drop in there, right? We want whatever is in here to show up here, but we don't want 
um, a variable to show up here. We want the actual string value. And so that's why this one is not in quotes and this one is. Then we finish up our button tag and add one to our button num. So every time we go over and generate a new button, we're adding one to button num. Then we hit this curly brace, which means we are done working with this column. So now come up and execute this code all over again and do it two more times. Then we are done working with this row. And so we hit the end of this, um, <coughs> excuse me, for loop and go back up into this row. Uh, we pull this array out and then we keep going from there. Finally, we've gotten over all the rows. So we put our closing div tag in here, which is going to close out our uh, board. And then we take all of the HTML we have generated, put it into this container here. And this container, we get out our inner HTML and shove in the HTML that we just generated. And what all that is doing is basically saying, hey, whenever we want to uh, add something to our board or update our data structure up here, what we're doing is we're updating our data and then we're converting essentially this board here into our HTML. Questions on that? Any surprises in there, any syntax that we don't know, any, hey, why did we do this line, anything like that before we keep going? Can you, um, can you explain the event to me one more time? Yeah, so the event is basically any time a user interacts with a web page, it's an event. Um, and that event can be listened to in JavaScript. And when we listen to the event, it's going to execute some function for us. So the event is giving us details about what the user just did. Now, normally events also have a target in them saying basically what, where did that event happen? What, were, what was the user clicking on or what were they interacting with? Um, and from there, we can pull out information like ID and, and other uh, things from there. So um, the button clicked is, is basically going to link our uh, on click. So when the, the click actually happens, it's going to go through our JavaScript and find a function called button click and pass the event into it. And from this parameter, we are able to access information like the target. And from the target, we can get into the ID. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other question? Uh, Shantina, go ahead. Um, for the, when we use inner HTML on the JavaScript page, yep. it, is that, is that saying like, uh, is this portion pretty much saying that we're changing the HTML, but only with, for when there's action or something or? No, um, what we're, what we're doing is we're saying, Hey, whenever we call update HTML, we haven't actually gotten to that yet. So this code isn't running, but. Okay. Once we generate out all of the HTML based off of whatever is in our board, what we're going to do is now that we've got all the HTML in one giant string, we're going to go to the container. Well, where's the container coming from? It's an ID in our document. So what we do is we go to our index.html and we get this whole div going on here. Mm -hmm. Then it says in our HTML. And then we say, OK, well, it's not really the whole div. We just want any of the HTML that is inside of that div. Okay. And then forget whatever is in there. Take all of this HTML. What HTML is this? That's all this HTML that we just generated and added all the buttons to. So because it's on the right side of the equal sign, it's saying take whatever is on the right side and shove it into the in the html inside of the container that's in our html document so what this one line of of code is doing is basically saying hey get rid of all of the code that is in here and instead show the code that we just generated from our html okay i'm glad you said that on the recording because i'm going to play that back again later so i can really make sure i have it in my head Sure. So like, so on the style sheets where we would just be able to just call on 
an ID or or what have you. This this is just how JavaScript works, where we can't just simply call or pull something. Like we have to actually specify the HTML. Yeah, and the reasoning for that is because there's a lot more on this container than just the inner HTML, right? So okay. if we wanted to, we could add an event listener, and that event. A uh, listener could say, hey, when you click on the container, I want you to do something. Or mm -hmm. we could say, hey, I want to add some styling to this, right? Well, the style isn't going to be in the inner HTML. It's going to be in the style tag itself. So we could actually do something along the lines of get the element uh, by the ID and pass in the container. Mm -hmm. there. And if we didn't want to target the inner HTML, we could actually do something like target the style. And in the style, we could say, hey, that whole container should have um, a border that's going to be 1px solid red. And that would actually work inside of that. And so if we did something like that, that dot style, is that um, saying that there would have already been something on the uh, cascading style sheets or is that is or you can actually just do it right within this you can do it right within there it doesn't actually oh. have to exist but okay. you could you could you could that would be one thing you could do you could also take this whole document get element by id and mm -hmm. say something like add uh append uh let's look it up um JavaScript add class to element. And what you're going to do, forget what the function is for it. Uh, add a class, class name, add JavaScript, uh, class list dot add. So you could say dot class list dot add, and then we could add, uh, you know, my border class here. Mm -hmm. And what that would do is essentially make this index.html have this on it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to keep listening then. Okay. That was pretty so cool. Thank you for explaining I, it. Like that. I think we can even test that. If we go in and pop open our live server mm -hmm. and we, in, oh, we inspect and look at our container. You notice uh -huh. there is now a border class on this. Oh, there is. But if you look at our index.html, that class isn't there the first time this page loads. What happens is that class is getting added right when this JavaScript executes. Okay. And we know that's the case because if we comment it out and go back to our JavaScript, you notice it won't be there. Oh, wow. So, we can do a lot more than just work with our inner HTML. We can add styles. We can add a classes to it. We could even delete that whole element out of the page or uh, change the idea of it or really anything that you would want to do interactively, we can do using it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Max. No problem. Danielle, you had a question and then I'm coming to you next, Christy. Okay, so um, you had explained that the ampersand in BSP had a purpose over in HTML, but I don't understand what its purpose is serving on line 14. Yeah, so it's saying it's a non-breaking space character. So what we would really like to do is basically say, hey, if the column has a value, right, if it has an X or an O, make that X or O show up. But on here, if it doesn't have one, that's what this or is saying. If, if it if a player has played in it already, show that up or show basically two space characters. And the reasoning behind that is our, our letter is the same width, whether it's an X or an O, roughly of two spaces next to each other. So the problem with HTML is it doesn't like showing multiple spaces because it thinks it's just code indentation. And so what we have to do is basically say, hey, we not only want one space to show up, we want two spaces to show up. All right, thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does, thank you. Perfect, Christy, you're up. Um, so my question is, um, is there somewhere 
we can go to so say like we did this code last night and then we we're looking at it today is there i don't know if it's on the w3 or somewhere but is there somewhere we can go to that would um have like a vocabulary so where we could um look up some of this stuff so that we would have some definitions to go with um, the verbiage that's there. That way, we when we come back, we we would be making a connection, but we would have a definition. Yep. So you just have to be careful here because we now have um, some CSS concepts going on here. We've got some uh, HTML concepts going on here, and we've got some JavaScript concepts going on here, right? So you have to be careful where you're going. So if you're looking at this for loop, you're like, this for loop has nothing to do with JavaScript, right? Or I'm sorry, has nothing to do with HTML. It's only JavaScript. So what we could do is we could go to Google and say JS for of loop. And first one is gonna be JavaScript MDN. Um, or the, the next one is going to be W3 score. And so they should have all of this um, documentation in here. And if you notice over here, they've got a JS loop for of, where they're going to break it down and say, hey, whatever the variable is, whatever we're iterating over, and whatever code block we want to run every time that we loop over it. So in this case, it's going to define out variable and iterative. Uh, or iterable, and then it's going to show you a little example of how you get all of your cars out. So that's that's one resource. The other one is looking in here and saying, hey, we're doing some get element by ID in the document. That's going to be related to the DOM, right? The uh, document object model, because it's the bridge between our HTML and our JavaScript. So what we do is when we go back here, um, I want to see, do they have... JavaScript HTML DOM, and they've got a whole intro in here, um, which is showing you all of the things that can come out of it. But they would also have things in here um, related to uh, get element by ID and the inner HTML and all of those examples. So um, some people like W3 schools because they've got a lot of examples and it's a little bit more user accessible. Other people like MDN more because it's a little bit more in depth. It, it feels more like a reference than a tutorial, um, but whichever one you prefer is fine. But I believe W3 Schools is going to have all the stuff that you're looking for. It's just a matter of breaking it down and saying, all right, uh, if I'm working with the CSS, you know, here's all the documentation about adding the styling that you wanted to and the color and all of that. So, so while you're in there, can we put in that double ampersand and see if that comes up? Because that's something that... The double ampersand is going to be um, in your JavaScript um, comparisons. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be your double equals. Mm -hmm. And you should also have your logical operators and your double ampersand. Okay, so log so under logical operators. Okay. In JavaScript comparisons, right? And the reason why it's in comparisons is because if we look at that if statement, we are comparing whatever is in the board to whatever is in the other side of the the triple equal. Okay, that was my question. Awesome. All right, any other questions on update HTML? We understand why we put it in a function. We can recognize it is a function due to this arrow syntax going on here. We know that if there were any parameters or arguments, they would go in here. And then the curly braces are, are encompassing the whole block of code saying, hey, we're going to start here and execute the code all the way down to 22. Good. Okay. So when we were working things out, when we wanted the computer to take a random turn, we needed a, a random number between zero and two, but we don't want to keep on saying, hey, math.floor, random, min, max, every time we want a random number. So what we did is we found this function called random number between. It takes two parameters, the min and the max, 
and then it uses math uh, floor and random and a little uh, lightweight math to figure out the number between uh, whatever parameters we passed in. So the way we use that is we said, hey, when we tell the computer to take a random turn, create an empty row, column, and index, but don't set them to anything yet because we need to check to see if they're empty. So while we don't have an empty row index, go set something up to store a random row and run our function up here that's going to find the random number between zero and two. So whatever gets returned out of this function is basically going to replace everything in here and store it into our random row. And then we're going to do that again in the random column. Now that we've got our two randoms, we need to check to see if the random numbers that we generated are actually empty in the board. So we say, hey, go to the board and take whatever the random row number was, zero, one, or two, and then also check the random column number, which is also going to be zero, one, or two. And if that is not in the board, which is what that exclamation mark is saying, that means that we have found an empty one. So we take our random row and our random column, store it in our empty row index and our empty column index. We hit this curly brace and the while loop comes back up and says, hey, have we found an empty row index yet? Well, we haven't found the empty row index. If we haven't found one, it's going to say, well, it's still empty. So we're gonna keep running until we find one, until we hit on one. And when we do, this will no longer be true. So we're gonna stop running the loop. But empty row index only ever gets set if we've gone to the board and found one that is empty. So then what we do is we say, okay, finally, once we have found one that is empty, go to the board, take our empty row index and our empty column index and make the computer make a move in there for the O. Then we finally come down to the last big chunk of the program where we're saying, hey, check the game status. And we need to check every way a player can win, right? They can win by having Xs in any row. So we need to check the first row by saying, hey, go to row zero and, in and column zero and see if there is an X in it. And if there is, check to see if they're in row zero and column one, if there is an X and check in row zero in column index two to see if there is an X. That means the top row of our board is filled with X's. So that means X has one. And so we return that out. Then we move on to the second row, right? So we say row one, 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 and check column zero, one, and two for those X's. And we go all the way through, and then we, we switch to checking our columns as well. The equal signs, what are the equal signs? This is a comparison operator. So when we use one equal, we say take whatever's on the right side of this and shove it into what's on the left side of this. When we use a triple equals, we're saying compare whatever is on the left side of this to whatever is on the right side of this. If the left side is equal to the right side, this whole thing becomes true. And so what we're doing is we're saying if this is true and if this is true, and if this is true, then this whole if statement must be true. So then go ahead and run whatever is between those curly braces. Okay. Stopping there, any questions before we moved on to our button click? That made it more. Oh. Okay. So we're gonna come down and our final main function is our button clicked. This is the guts of the whole computer, right? Because this is what the event that kicks off all of our code. And so first thing we do is we go to our event target ID. That is pulling out the ID from right here. And what we're doing is we're saying, hey, if it's button one that's getting clicked on, it must be row zero and column zero. So go ahead and throw an X in there. If it's button two, it must be the button to the right of it. It must be in the first column, but still, I'm sorry, in the second column, but the first row. So go ahead and shove an X in there. And we go through all the way for all of our buttons and make sure our Xs get placed in the right spot. Then we say, before we do anything else, before we even show up that X, check the game status. Well, check game status is the whole function we just went through up here to see if the player has already won. And if they have one, 
then what we do is we say, hey, you won, and we clear out the board. Otherwise, we make the computer take a random turn, but no matter what, we tell it, hey, go update the HTML because we're updating the board here and we're updating the board here. But whenever we update our JavaScript board, right, our multi-dimensional array, we also need to tell it, hey, take that board, loop over it all and generate out our JavaScript again. And then finally, at the end, we use our update HTML method. And because this is not in any function, all it does is it says, hey, the first time you load script JS, go use this update HTML function to take our board data and make it show up in the container. Can, can you show us, can you hit um, the go live so we can see at this point what our... Um, yep. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I understand that all the X is in there and I do see where you have like an O and a, and a quote. How, how is it switching back and forth to the X and O? So... Um, say that already. Nope, I, I can go over that. Give me one second. Let me just show Christy. Um, I just started the live share. Um, so if you want to play around with my version of it, if you go to the live share area and then under share server, it should say, am I on? Ooh. How did I set my live server up last time to go on? Invite me. 5601 because if I put it on 5600 it's going to conflict with the version that you guys have um, there we go okay so if you want to play around with my version of it um, if you go into live share over here under shared servers it should say localhost uh, 5601. And if you double click on that, it should take you to the version that I have running on my computer. And then you should be able to click on different buttons and have them play out. Okay, thanks. Uh, Nicole, your question was, um, I've seen how you, I understand how the X's work, but how do we, how does it switch from O? Yep. So what we do is we check to see if there's a game winner. If X is already won, there's no reason for the computer to play. If they haven't won, we go to this computer random turn. We do all of the stuff to find an empty index here. And then once we finally find an empty spot, we tell it to put an O in that spot. Oh, so the computer is O. Yes. Ah. Player is always X, computer is always O. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Okay, any other questions? No. Good review, worthwhile reviewing all of that, or you guys want to just, would you rather have just dived in? That was, I'm going to watch it again and again and again and again until I commit it to memory. Good. I mean, this is 126 lines of code, right? So it's important here to say, like, we are touching, like I said at the beginning of class, we're using functions, we're using for loops, we're using while loops, we're using um, variables, we're using strings, we're using multidimensional arrays, we're using uh, the DOM to, to get our HTML to show up, we're using template literals here, we are using... Um, indexes and incrementers and uh, math.random and floor and there are a lot of concepts going on here it's almost like i planned out this entire project at the end of our javascript to make sure that we were practicing with all those random different things we don't have a boolean or do we, we well we kind of do yeah. Because this if statement is evaluating out to a Boolean. Okay. So yeah, you're right. We don't have a Boolean that we're setting to a variable, but we are kind of using a Boolean in there. All right. How are we feeling? Do we have any final questions before we dive back into our code? Um, I just got to catch up in the code.
No problem. So that is a good segue for me because I'm going to pull up. Did you check one thing? Yep. My holes were, were, were working and then it's not working anymore. Okay. Um, let me pull out uh, up the outline and then I will come back to you, Wayne. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Six. One, two, three, four. Okay, so goals for today are to make the computer check for diagonal wins, then check to see if the computer has won. Then we need to make the computer block. So um, if the person is about to win, check to see if something should be blocked and, and make that move in there. Um, and then finally, we're going to refactor our code so it's not just a whole bunch of if statements and trying to get smart about using a for loop and checking the board without a whole bunch of lines of code. Um, didn't put the homework in here yet, but it will be to turn this in. You'll have two homework assignments um, for this week. The first one will be uh, getting our JavaScript weather forecast to work. Um, that is practicing with our data structures and making sure our data is properly formatted. Um, and then that will also be uh, practicing with our loops and getting our JavaScript to update and that fun stuff. Um, that homework assignment does exist. Um, and then the other homework assignment I will either create tonight or tomorrow night. And that is going to be uh, turning this tic-tac-toe in. Um, reminder that we are going to be optionally in person tomorrow. Um, and then next week we are off on Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are only virtual. And the following Monday is also virtual. Um, and then we will decide whether we want to go all virtual or uh, facilitate something in person. Monday is nothing. Monday is you're off. There is no one showing up. Um, I was just talking to Jesse today about trying to see if we could like work in a week off or um, so I need to go back into the curriculum and see where I can give up some time, but um, we may try and shoot for like a summer recess at, at some point, um, but I will keep you guys up to date on that. It probably won't be for another month, but the good news is, is that we have next Monday off for Memorial Day, um, then we have a full week, and then the following Monday we also have off for Juneteenth. Any word on benefactors for the computers? No, but I forgot to ask Jesse about that uh, this week, so I will follow up with him. Um, there is also a document that I will share during break about um, co-working locations. Um, we reached out to a couple of them to get student discounts. So if you guys are interested in um, co-working uh, memberships where you could just come in and work like nine to five or just have unlimited access, um, there is a document that I will share with everyone during the break uh, about that. Okay. Um, and it's office, fine to use your stipend on that as well. Office hours. Office hours. Uh, do we want to poll or do we want to just say 5 30 on Sunday? Five o'clock on Sunday? What time did we do it last? Five. Do we want to say five on Sunday or do uh, people want me to send out another poll? Five on Sunday works for me. I'm not, I'm not going to make it so I ain't going to poll. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I'm fine with that. Okay. You guys uh, okay with five on Sunday? Right. Well, is it something, is there a problem for other people? Is there a problem? Well, Larry no, just, I don't think so. Oh, Larry just can't make it at all. Uh, no, not, not on not Sunday because I got a funeral and a dinner. So. Mm. Oh, it's just a one week thing. Yeah, just that. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with Sundays. I just have to remember it most of the time. That's all. Me too. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in my calendar though, so we'll be good. Okay, so office hours, 5 p.m. Sunday. Uh, yeah. Yes. Good? All right. All right, that, so. People don't say anything and then nobody comes, so I don't know. It's okay. just. We, we good. Right. Close mouths right. don't get fed. <laughs> You are the only two saying anything. Nobody else is saying anything, and it's like fourteen of us. Close mouth, don't get fed. You got the show, Chrissy. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, believe it or not, I'm actually going to shut up for once, and someone is going to try and make the computer check for diagonal wins in addition to row wins and column wins. Who wants to start on that? I was about to say, who is someone? <laughs> 
nobody. I have a question. Scotty, go ahead. All right. Um, is I want to see how I want to word this. When I go first, the computer goes, and then does the computer go again? Because if I put a like, if I go, then it's like the computer throws two O's in. Is that how it's supposed to be? Oh no. Okay. So, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> so what you want to check there is make sure we only have our computer random turn mm -hmm. once. And so if we search all of this code, it's going to show up twice. The one time is when we actually call it to execute it with the parentheses. The only other time we reference it is when we create the actual function to tell it, hey, this is what I want it to do. So you should search for your code for a computer random turn and see if you have that in there a third time. I did. Okay. All right. <laughs> While you're unmuted, do you want to make the computer uh, check for diagonals? Um, nope, I'm going to let Larry go ahead and do that. <laughs> I said nobody. He sounded, nobody very, he sounded really I excited. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said if nobody volunteers, I will. Anyone else want to jump in front of the bus? Nah. All right, Larry. I can't. Larry. I, can't, I, can't. So I gotta share my screen or just talk about it. Um, I'm sharing mine, so just kind of talk me through what you want me to do. And this is an example of pair programming, right? So this is. Um, oh. What, Chrissy? Are we doing the whole move our code over to day three and starting? A new thank thing. you for asking. Yes, we are. Uh, um, why you did that to me, Max? When, when I was playing, can you leave that like move your uh, picture up? So, so we yes, I can. I sure can. Um, I'm going to sorry, I'm gonna have to restart the live share because I was in the wrong day folder. Um, so I'm gonna right click duplicate my day two and I'm gonna rename that as day three. And here's a little trick. I don't know if I've taught this to you guys yet. If you take your day three folder and just drag and drop it to the VS Code icon in your dock, it will pop open the whole folder for you. Yeah, we nice. Yeah. Oh we knew that already. Oh, that was <laughs> I figured that out yesterday. I was watching a video last night. I was like, oh, uh, hey. okay. I, think I missed that. You do that with a bunch of, uh, almost every program anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You, you bring the other picture back. I sure can. Let me pull up my script. Oh. So, Okay. But that's the um, same folder. You didn't so, duplicate that and drag it, did you? I did. I right click, duplicate it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you did that first before you dragged yep. it. Yep. And then I take the new folder, I renamed it, and then drag that in. Okay. Okay. Um, you want this up, and let me see how much. Oh, oh no. It's only two diagonals. Oh, I did check for both. All right, one, two. All right. What's that? Yeah, do you have a folder? Yeah. All right, Larry, that's the that's the best. Oh, here, get this over. There you go. All right. So we want to check for the diagonal. Diagonal. So there's a couple ways you can do it, but I'm just going to go from the top left corner down to the bottom right. So we want to check to see if. Um, Let's drag over. What does it say? Board at zero, zero is equal to X. Okay, so I'm going to come right up here and I'm going to say board zero, zero. Right, so to compensate. Are you asking what you're supposed to, what you're supposed to? Call? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, we're supposed to be down checking in the winners. Page. Yeah, we should. So I we should be. Plus with it. All right, so go down further. Okay. Yep. All so the way to the last L stiff. Yeah. All right, so let's make another L stiff. Okay. And if um, in the parentheses, if board zero, zero is triple equal to string X and board one, one triple equal to string X and board two, two is triple equal to okay. string X. What's not like a or in here too? Like, I mean, I, so so I know we could do another if, if else, but can't we just like um put that like all in one big parenthesis and then put an or and then check for the other diagonal right there? We could. Okay. 
I think that that would be harder to read though, because we are going to have a whole long or in there. Um, so I would, I think this code is easier to read, but it would work. What Larry is suggesting is if what happens if we just have one giant if statement and we say, <laughs> hey, check to see if these three work or check to see if these three work or check to see if these three work and get all the way down to the bottom. And that's one giant if statement. And if any one of those ors is true, just return out the x. You could do it. I kind of like this syntax a little bit more because you can tell which ones you're checking for, but it would work. Okay. So we, we've checked for the diagonal going from top left corner to the bottom right corner. Yep. Now we could either check from the top right to the bottom left or the bottom left to the top right, special slope from left to right. Um, Before I finish. to return X here though. Yep. The string. Another else if. Uh, four, two, zero, triple equals X. And board one, one, triple equals X. And four, zero, two, triple equals X. So genius me over here tried to create everything in this code without having a visual. And I missed one as I, as I was going quickly and couldn't figure out. I'm like, all right, two, zero. Two zero. That's um. Is that the second row? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is in the first column. So, it is very important when you're whenever you're working with something and you can't keep it all in your head. Do not think that just because the computer can keep it all in their head, that means you can keep it all in your head. So I always have scrap paper next to my computer while I'm coding, and there are times that like I'm working with database IDs and I'm like getting dyslexic in my head and I can't keep you know. 10 digit numbers in my head. So I just have a piece of paper and I jot it down, right? So if you're someone who's a visual learner or you keep on stumbling over the same indexes, don't be afraid to create a visual like this just by jotting it down on the paper because it's gonna help you remember, hey, which, which ones are we targeting? Okay, so Live. this should all work. Chris, do you have a question? Live share. Here. Oh, yeah. Live share and share with read only. And that took care of that. And then I'm also going to share my server if it was on the right port. Six okay, you should be good to go. Okay, so let's test it. Put an X here, computer just screwed over my plan. So let's see if we can get rid of it, get it to win. All right, X is one, that's our left diagonal. And then we need to check for our right diagonal. It randomly blocked me though, and it's continuing to randomly block me. And then we got our X one. Okay, but this is bothering me. If X is one, why doesn't that X show up? That's what you talked about earlier. So, come up with a solution <laughs> so that the update is being the alert is being called before the update bingo that is exactly what the problem is so if we look at our alert what's happening is we alert that the game winner has won so what we can do here is if we just add in a console.log and we say console log false and then down here we console log true when we go over to our inspect and try and win the game and look in our console, you see we've got the false logging out, but we don't have the true logging out because this alert acts as a pause statement. It basically says, don't do any of the stuff down here. Well, what's the stuff down here? It's cleaning out the board and it's also calling our update HTML. So none of this code is running until I hit my OK button. And now my true logs out and it clears out the board and then calls update HTML. OK, well, I don't really want it to do that. I would like it to, uh, I would like it to show my X up, update the HTML, 
then show the alert that we've won. And then once the alert is cleared, then go ahead and clear out my board. So um, we can- Max? Yep. I'm sorry, the live share link um, that you put in, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Same, it's the same one and it's not, it's not working. I put it in the chat. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I pasted the same one. Sorry, my bad. Let's try this one. Yep, that one should work. Okay, so now that we are, okay, cool. See you guys joining. Um, so what we can do is we can use something called a set timeout. And the set timeout is basically saying, hey, wait a certain amount of time to run this code. But when it runs the code, it kind of runs the code asynchronously, meaning it runs it at a separate time and it doesn't block everything up. So what we can do in here is we say, if there is a game winner, what we would like to do is set a timeout. And then we've got to tell it two things. What function we would like it to run on a delay and how long of a delay we want it to be in milliseconds. So remember, there are a thousand milliseconds in every second. So if we want there to be a 5,000 uh, millisecond delay or a five second delay to declare the winner, we can take our alert and move it inside of our set timeout. Mm -hmm. So what we do here is we play the game and as soon as we win, two, three, four, five, our alert pops up. Now we don't want it to actually wait five seconds, but you notice it cleared the whole board for me. So it immediately cleared the board, but it didn't hold everything up for my alert. So what we really wanna do is let's think this through. What we would like it to do is say, hey, just wait 100 milliseconds. Wait one tenth of a second to show if, a, if the person has won the game. And once they have won the game, that's when we would like to clear the board and also update the HTML. So by putting all of this code in this set timeout, we're basically saying, hey, run this later. Run this 100 milliseconds later. And when you run that later, that's when the alert is going to hold everything up, clear out the board for us, and then update our HTML. So we uh, want to show the other X too? Well, it is because we also have this update HTML still hanging out down here. So if we say our X, our X, and our X, now because this is running 100 milliseconds after, it's still placing our X, it's still going to update our HTML, 100 milliseconds is going to pass, then it's going to say, hey, your 100 milliseconds is up, come in this function and run these three lines of code. So this set timeout is a way to not only delay your code from running, it is another way to say, hey, run this afterwards, don't have everything hold up based off of this code. I think that's a good stopping point. Let's stop there and kick off a poll. <laughs> yep, go for it. I want to delay the time for the, the computer responds of me cutting the X. And how would you do that? You would say, yes. Press X and then the computer is right after you. Like, yep. You, would you do it pretty much like same thing. It nail on the head, same thing. You would take your set timeout here, and whenever you placed your O, you would do a set timeout and tell it, hey, how long do you want it to wait to do that? So let's say uh, two seconds, which would be 2,000 milliseconds. And then what we also have to do is say, hey, update the HTML on that two second delay as well. Underneath that, 
uh, in, in it because we want, if we took this and put it outside of it, it wouldn't be on a two second delay. But if we put it inside of it, now it's going to run both of these lines on a two second because of that code block. So now when we click, we wait one, two, and then the O shows up. And then we click again and we wait one, two, and the next O shows up. We have a little extra time for those of us that weren't in the live share and missed a little bit of stuff. Yep, I'm not moving on until I get at least 10 votes in the poll. And again, for everyone voting no, but keep going, that is completely fine to not follow along with me, but that means you've got to go back through, read every line of code while everyone else is working on catching up and make sure you understand everything. If you don't, if there are any syntax issues, it, it's not about what we coded, it's about why we coded it. So if there is a, I don't get this anywhere, let me know and I will recover that while everyone else is catching up. I missed it. You um, missed. Yeah, I was trying to duplicate my folder. <laughs> okay. So the, the only code that we really updated was we added in these two if statements, and I should add comments here for Shaq. So can I duplicate and put them at the bottom and change the numbers? <coughs> can I copy my own code, put it at the bottom, and then change the numbers? What do you mean by change the numbers? Because that's connected to, that's already connected to my else if section, right? Yep. So if I just take those bottom two and just dump them in, yeah, yeah. that will work. So always copy and paste your own code. Um, I'm scared to do any copying. Oh. I'll just type everything code? out. For your code, you I, don't, I don't trust it. You want to copy and paste your code so that way you don't have so many typos. Right. So and then um, the only other thing that we did is we put this code. Um, the if game winner in a set timeout. And that's what made the X actually show up before the, hey, you've won. Okay. Got it. Yeah. There for a you got it. Got seven people in. I'm going to wait until at least we got 10 votes in. So take your time. Let me know if anyone has questions. Why do we have one? Where's that other blue one go? Oh. What other blue one? Like that time out blue. This one? Yeah. This one goes down to this one. Right after the hundred. Okay. This is auto doing it. Why do I have a bracket here? Oh. Nine votes in. Looks like we're making progress. Just waiting for one more. If you get stuck anywhere or need to share your screen, let me know. All right, we do have 10 votes in, but I'm getting the vibe that we might be able to get to 11. So I'm going to give everyone just one more second. It's true. Yep. That's the timeout. Yep. Doesn't do nothing. Okay. It's in the set timeout. Jumps, For 100 milliseconds. Jumps past the else. Updates the HTML. Then the 100 milliseconds pass or whatever. And then it goes. Mm. It does that. And then it hits the alert, but it waits. It doesn't do any of this because the alert 
right. holds everything up until you hit OK. OK, then it clears the board, updates it, so you have a clear board. Yep, you got it. Hi, I was class was at 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Why does it say one? Is that because what? One two seven zero zero one is considered local host, or in other words, it's an IP address reserved for your own computer. So when you see one two seven zero zero one up here, um, that is saying like, hey, this server is on my own computer. So anything, any other IP address would be going out to the internet. Unless you see something that starts with 10 dot something or 192 dot something. And then you're saying, go out on my local network, go out on the network that my router has created. So I'm not going to the internet, but maybe I'm going to a device that's connected to my router and trying to communicate over there. Um, so 127 is always yourself. Um, 192 or 10 dot something um, are your um, local network addresses. Um, and then pretty much any IP address between um, one and all the way up to 255 um, are going to be out on the internet, um, except maybe 254, because 255 is reserved for what is called masking, which is basically figuring out what part of the IP address you care about. Um, so I've got a shirt that says stay at 127.0.0.1 and wear a 255, 255, 255, because it's stay at local host or your home, wear a mask. <laughs> I don't normally buy gimmick Easter shirts, but I saw that one and I'm like, wow, it's really going to take a nerd to get that one. I want that. I have a question. What did you say? I got it. How did we... <laughs> How did we know in the code that like after we do well we get three in a row? How do how do we know that? Like because it checks each no, one. No, because mine don't. I did four. I had three in a row, then I did four and then five. There's and then something wrong with it. Yeah, it's like this way I won, but it didn't say anything. And then when I went this way, it it won. You have the right so you've got to check here because if it detected that you won somewhere. That means one of your if statements is correct. But not the other. But if you didn't win, if you're like, I, if you're saying, hey, I'm checking for the diagonal and I didn't say I won on the diagonal, that's when you want to read your comments and figure out which one of them is it supposed to be. And then you want to check in your indexes here and make sure that they are correct. Okay. <clears throat> Quest question. Yep, go ahead, Max. Um, I was not clearing. I'll just share it so it's easier for, for you to explain yep. it. Before you do, um, Larry, make sure your update HTML is in your set timeout and that you've got your clear board happening after your alert. Yeah, that's that. what it is. It's update HTML after the time. Wayne, go ahead and share, and Larry, I can come to you next if you don't have it figured out. That's what he said. Where did you go? Um, so why, let me do this first. Let me guess, your computer is not taking a random turn. No, no. When I clear this out from here, right? Yep. Save. <laughs> Refresh. It doesn't do the, the O's at all, right? Okay. So, so go back to your code before you put anything in. Look at any method we call. Update HTML, check game status. What do the parentheses do after that? What are the parentheses telling the computer to do? To execute. It is. So when you just say check game status, it's like, great. I know, I know what check game status is. And then when you put the parentheses in, it's saying, oh, you didn't want me to just get check game status. You wanted me to run all of the code in check game status. So now let's look at where our computer makes a random turn, which is on 136. 136 down at the bottom. That's where we define the random turn and we have it be a function and all of that stuff is great but go down to where we actually tell it to make the random turn, to run the code in random turn. 
136, all the way down at the bottom. 135, sorry. Look at 135, compare that to 132. What is missing? There you go. So, oh, so, okay, cool. Because I had, I had it there. Okay, all right, I get it now. So, I was missing the. Okay. Yeah, your um, go up to your update HTML, Wayne. Uh, no, he's got his two NBSPs, or he's got three NBSPs in there, and it's still jumping around. Yeah, it works perfectly, actually. Go down to the other. I don't think so. Oh, no. It's fine. We'll just let it go. You're good. All right. I'm done sharing. You good, Larry? <sighs> Yeah, okay. So again, Larry, Larry kind of just read through this, but uh, want to touch on it. Uh, we do have 11 votes in, so we'll move on. Um, but um, what Larry read through is really important to be able to do. So to read this code, because you're going to get into a job interview, and in that job interview, they're going to hand you some code and say, tell us what this code is doing. And so it's important to be able to um, start from the top and read our way down. So we're saying, hey, when the button is clicked, we go through this if statement and based off of whatever ID, we put that, that X into the board based off of the index. Then we come down and we say check game status, which is what's going to go through the whole board and figure out if X is one anywhere. And then we check to see if there is a game winner. If there is a game winner, we say, hey, there's code. Anything between these curly braces right here, we're going to run in 100 milliseconds, which is defined here. So then if there is a game winner, we skip the else and we update the HTML. Then we wait the eternity of 100 milliseconds and the computer goes, oh, there's this block of code you wanted me to run. Go ahead and tell them that the, the player has won clear out the board, and then update our HTML. And then the computer is back to doing nothing. But if there is not a game winner, we don't do this code on a delay. We don't do this code at all. We just make the computer take the random turn, and then we update the HTML again. OK, so. Let's go back and think like a user. What if I play as poorly as the computer does? So I'm gonna place an X, I'm gonna place an X, and I'm gonna try and get the computer to win. Yay. Well, kind of yay. Computer wins. Computer wins, why am I not getting a computer win? Alert. Check for the winning of the computer. All we did is we did all of this code in here, and we did a bunch of checking for X's, but we never checked for O's. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this code. <laughs> copy and paste. Oh, man. And this is what is called technical debt, everyone. Command V. And then we're going to go back up. And we could use our command D trick. But I'd like to show you find and replace because that's a really useful tool for everyone. So I'm going to highlight everything. And I'm going to hit command. No, I'm going to hit command F first. And then I'm going to highlight all of the code that I just pasted. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to say anytime that you find a quote X, replace it with a quote O. And then we're going to find this find in selection button, and we're going to click on that. And what this find in selection is going to do is say, we're only going to replace things that are in our selected text, because we don't want to replace all the quote X's. 
we only want to replace the X's in this section of code all the way down to line 10158. So when I let go of that, I should be able to hit this replace all button and have it not work. Question. Did I do a capital X? This is our line in the copy and paste. What, what, are, what line are we starting at? One we're line? copying one, uh, we're copying 52 all the way down to 104. Okay. I don't know why that didn't work though. We're copying it on, on line 106. Yes. <clears throat> okay, now it's working. I just had to fiddle with it. So it's going to highlight anything in the X in orange, and uh, that's saying it's going to replace all of those. So if I hit, click this replace all button, it should replace all of my O's but it didn't replace any of my X's up here because I didn't have it selected. So now if we come over here and refresh and I try, whoa, that's not right. Uh, when I click on a button, place, oh, place an X, I had that wrong. Okay, when I click on one, there we go, now it's working. Um, and I click on uh, another one and I try and let the computer win. Oh no, I don't let the computer win now, did I? I hit X, I hit X, hit X down here, hit X over here, and that still didn't work. Max? Yep. Uh, I'm having some trouble with that. Um, uh, search in like selected um range okay um so you like highlight it first and then do command f no i think you do command f and then you type in what you're looking for and then you type in what you want to replace it with and then you hit the in selection button and then you highlight it Oh, so it shouldn't be highlighted when we go command F. Yeah, I think if you command F, it's going to clear out your highlight. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna do oh, <laughs> well, you can also do, here's the other way of doing it. Let me show you an alternative. So when you paste in all of your code, I'm going to back it out. Um, when you paste in all of your code with the X's, ah. um, you can put your mouse at the first X and highlight it and hit Command D and keep on hitting Command D until all of your X's are highlighted. Oh, cool. Um, we're, we don't even need to backspace, backspace it, excuse me. All we need to do is type in the letter O and it's gonna replace them all. Let me write that down, Command D. D, and then you're going to keep on hitting Command D until you get all of the X's. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got that in there. If you want to copy and paste for mine, that's also fine. Um, so we're going to let the computer win. And it's not telling us it won. Why not? Because you got to got to set the game winner for the computer as well so. well we, we did we're returning oh we're checking to see if the game uh winner exists but look where we do it we tell it hey place the x in there and then only check if the game winner check to see if the player won right but then the computer goes it updates the html it never takes the time to figure out if the computer has also won. Right. So do we have to give the computer its own name? Like, No, all we need to do here is check again. We need to say, hey, oh, 
all, well, what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, if there's a game winner, then do this, this set timeout, all of that's fine. Else, have the computer take its turn and then check to see if now there is a game winner. Should we also need to check? How are you going to know which one it is? Because. Can't we? Can't we oh, just, it's going to do it can automatically. We, can we just check to see what variable was being returned and then you say if this one is the computer, if not, it's the other one? No, because, well, we're kind of doing that here, but we only want to check and make the computer go if the player hasn't already won, okay. right? Because we don't want the computer to go until we check to see if the player just won. Right. Then we make the computer take its turn and check again to see if the computer or the player has won. And if we now have another game winner, then do the same thing, set alert, clear the board, and update the HTML. Got it. Difficult. And now I miss a closing curly brace somewhere. Oh, yeah, we can refactor this code to move it into a function and then reuse that function. So we're going to do that in a second. But first, let's test to see if this works. So again, we're checking for the game status. We put the X in. Then we check to see if, if anyone has won. If there is a game winner, then we're going to say, hey, whoever won, put it out, clear the board, update the HTML, and do all of that after 100 milliseconds. If there is not a game winner, then we want the computer to take its random turn. Once the computer goes, check the game status again. Shove that back into the game winner. And if there is a game winner, again, on a 100 second delay, go ahead and say that, that they've won, clear the board and update the HTML. Okay. So now if we come over here and we let the computer win, hopefully we get O has won. Yay. Sorry. So you put that O. <laughs> So we're going to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, Stephanie, to get it to work, the find and replace in selection was a little finicky. So instead, what you can do is you can highlight the first O here and hit Command D. And you see how that kind of highlighted the second O here. And if we, oh, hold on. You're going to. You're going to highlight the X and hit Command D, and it's going to keep on highlighting the next X. You keep on hitting Command D until you've got all of the X's in like that blue color, and then you can hit O, and it will replace all of them for you. Is the number supposed to be different for O? Thank you. Thank you. No. no, all the numbers will stay the same because we're checking the same spots. Do you want to check my code? Yep. Go for it. I know it's close to break time. Once we get everyone up and running, we'll take a break. Uh, you missed your, so all of those are fine because they're returning X. But if you scroll down, you've got, Oh no, all of those are right. Check for so. Command D and then keep hitting Command D to select all of that. Okay, all of that looks right. I, yeah, you. I think that's an extra one. Just take that one out. And I think that might fix all your problems. All right, wait one second. Let me see if the other one. Come on, man. Oh. oh. Okay, so got you've got to go to your um, no, not your console because you don't actually have any errors. You're just not telling it, 
hey, check after the computer has gone to see if there is a winner. Oh, right, right. Okay, I didn't get to that part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Zach, you're up, and then Stephanie. Um, yeah, let me see. I can still, let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay. I can still play, but I can't. Okay, so every time you, oh. Is it okay and refresh your page there? All right, try it again. So stop. Look what's going on in the browser, in the console. You've got an assignment to a constant variable on 189. So go to your 189. And what, what's happening is it's trying to take check game status and store it in game winner again. But game winner is up here. And it said, hey, the winner is constant. That game winner is never going to change. Okay. So you need to change your const on 176 to a let because we are saying, hey, game winner may be dynamic. It may change. Okay. Sweet, thank you. No problem. Stephanie, you're up. Uh-oh, has what? Yay. <laughs> no. Hello. <laughs> um. I have mine so close. So you've got the same problem that Zach had, and I probably should have I uh, said that when I go back to your code, you've got assignment to a constant variable on 196. Okay. So what we did is we, ch we are now reusing game winner here, which means our game winner up here is no longer going to be constant. It is going to change based off of that check game status. So on 183, we've got to say, hey, let game winner oh. be our, because we're changing that further down on the page. What game? Oh, I got a copy. Uh, you might need to refresh because I don't think that. Oh, oh, the you. It might pick the pick the bottom left one. It, it's not. Let me click it. It's not. Mm -hmm. Refresh. It happened to me yesterday too, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might need to, you might need to, yeah, close it and restart your live server. Hey. Good work. Thank you. No problem. Nice. Christy, you're up. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. So what if they heard me say nice? Well, I'm not muted. So when I do this. Oh, sorry, Zach. I just went to mute you right after you did, so you can just hit no on that. Go ahead, Christy. Okay. So. Mine is crazy. I, I, I have these dots and I All right, can't... Go, go to your update.html method. Uh, wait, you said update.html? Update HTML. Up here? It's yep. Keep going. Um... How'd you break it? Uh, Are these supposed to be those ticks? Nope, no. that's fine. The way you have it. Um, well, no, I'm trying to figure out where your 
Oh, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Wait, for or the found or for. Yeah, okay, never mind. Go back up. Sorry, Christy. I think Karen beat me to it. See in between the space with the line 14. This right there, that. Oh, yeah, that's supposed to be a semicolon, not a colon. Save that. Wait. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I still don't see that. Okay, so now you've got something going on on your on click that you need to fix. If you change the um, const to let. Uh, pop open your console, Christy. Okay. Which const to let? In the, brow in the browser, go back to your console. When something isn't working, you need to pop open your console in the browser to make sure that the browser isn't trying to tell you that there's an error. And now it's saying random number between is not defined on 36. So look at you, you're calling random number between where did we set up random number between? Line 36. 36 is where we call it, but where do we define what that function is? Up here. Yep. yep. And I don't know about you, but uh, I don't want any radon number between because radons are really bad for your health. Oh, random. There we go. Yeah, that works. Okay. Are you trying to let them work? Yeah. So if I let them work, I won. I won. I won. Okay. <laughs> the problem. <laughs> okay. Um. It's like anytime I try to complete it, it goes page and responses in Anyone else have a problem? I'll help you during the break. Anyone I, else? I, I had a I had a problem, but I fixed it. I just kind of figured out. I, I had Mr. Curly braces. I uh, went through it. Okay, so I got it. Okay, so right before we go on break, what we have going on is sometimes you guys are getting stuck in an infinite loop, and we want to prevent that. So it's best practice. Whenever we do a while loop um, to say, hey, let's check some other thing. Let's keep track of how many times the num, uh, uh, num loop runs is equal to zero. And every time this loop runs, at the end of the loop, just add one to the number of loop runs. And then we want to check and say, hey, this while loop should run whenever we have an empty row index and the number of loop runs is under 1,000. If this loop has run more than 1,000 times, I'm guessing that we're never going to find one. And then down here, we can say if the num loop runs got above 999, then alert infinite loop detected computer couldn't find empty spot to play everyone panic all right i'm panicking brian we get there yet. so i'm going to save that and i don't think there is a way for me let's see if we end in a draw, maybe. Did you get rid of board empty row in that with the zero on it? Or do I have an extra? Where? Line, it was line 42. 42. Uh, no, I, do you have a do while loop still? I have, I don't have a do in front of it. It's while, I don't, I don't have that thousand on there. So that's what I just added. I added a variable here that says num loop runs. So why do I have a random board empty row? 
index that's in the middle. That could be causing your infinite loop, oh, okay. which could be all of the problems. Okay. So there should be, if our code runs right, there's no way that either there's going to be an O winner or there's going to be an X winner, um, or th there's no way here for it to, it, there should be no way for it to trigger this infinite loop. The point of this is saying, hey, in case something goes wrong in my loop, catch it after the loop has run a thousand times and just say, I don't know, something went wrong. So when you're in here and you're playing, I don't think there should ever be a way. So I think, so this if statement with the num loop is a new one on top of, like right before the const gain set. Yes. Okay. Like, where did that so, and what we should do is put this in an else and say, "Hey, else." That's what the that's the line I was looking. For. Sorry, I let me. Out, this is what we want to do. So, what we did is we said, "Hey, let num loop loops runs equal zero, right? We need a starting place." Then, in our while loop, we had this run while there's not an empty index, but we also say run while there's not an empty index. And the number of times this loop has run is under a thousand. Then we have to add our num loop runs plus plus because every time this loop runs, we want to add one to it. And then at the end of this loop running, we want to say, hey, if the number of times this loop ran was not was greater than nine nine nine, tell the user something went wrong. Otherwise, go ahead and the number of loop runs must have been under a thousand. So go ahead and play for whatever empty column uh, index we found. Are we getting rid of that semicolon? Which one? Under the num loop plus plus. Uh, because it's all in one it's wild thing. This is all in a while, so you shouldn't need a semicolon there. I don't think it would hurt anything if you had it, though. Maybe. So if you're freezing up, try this code see if this helps and if you're still finding that you're freezing up let uh let me know after the break and we can work on it what did, what did happen? so let's go on a break we're going to be back at 7 40 and we're going to start getting the computer set up to get a little bit smarter on how it's playing see you all at 7 40. Okay, so where we were at, we have the computer now taking a random turn. Um, that is progress. We capped it off and we said, hey, don't let this loop run more than a thousand times. And we declared a variable up here to catch for that. And then we incremented it and checked to see if the loop has run more than a thousand times. Tell the user, hey, something went wrong. Otherwise, go ahead and add in the spot that we, we found for uh, the computer to go. So now we're over here and we're gonna say, all right, if we, we play and we win, it says X is one. And if we play for the computer to win, um, I have what, if it's lines, I have to write in a line. If it's nothing, I'll write freely. <laughs> couldn't let the computer win that time because it's not particularly smart. So let's try it again. Uh, uh, oh, has won. So we've got both sides of it working, and that's because we've got this massive check game status going on that is checking all of the spots to make sure that it is correct. Okay, now what is our next step? Let's go back to our outline. What we had set out to do today was make sure the computer's checking for diagonal wins. It is. It's checking for the computer win. Okay, that's good. Now it should check uh, to see if it can block the user from winning. If it can block the user from winning, it should take that spot. If it can't block the computer from, or if, if, the, if the human is not about to win, just make a random move. Okay, so we've got all of this function going on that says computer random turn but we don't actually want it to take a random turn anymore. We would like it to make a computer block or random 
return. And then we need to go and define that as well. So I'm gonna copy here. I'm gonna come back up and right underneath my random turn function, I'm sorry, after the, yep, here's computer random turn. We wanna do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna come down here before check game status. And I'm gonna say const computer block or random turn is going to be a new function. And I know you guys are having a ton of fun with very long if statements, but that is exactly what we need to do. So the reason why I keep on going back to this outline is that when you guys are in the workforce, you're gonna have a daily list of tasks to get done. And it's gonna be very easy to go out on lunch and come back and then be like, oh, what was I working on? And then you look at your list and you're like, oh, just pick up where, pick up on this next one. So it's important as you're going through these things to kind of cross them off your list and say, well, I've been checking for diagonal wins, I'm checking for the computer win, now I'm on to the next thing. Because in the workforce, you're going to have a daily standup, just like we have at the beginning of every class, where you have to report out, hey, I set out to do one, two, and three today, but then four and five popped up, and that wasn't on my initial plan. So now I, had, I got one, four, and five done, and two and three got pushed off. So it's important to be able to identify those and document them as you're getting your work done, because otherwise you're gonna, your boss is going to be like, well, you were here all day yesterday. What did you do? And you've got to be able to convey that work that you're getting done. So anyway, how do we go about getting the computer to block a player? If. <laughs> if. If. Um, check game status. Is that it? What's the name of it? Check game status is here, but check game status is checking for three in a row. That's you don't want to look for three in a row anymore. We want to look for two in a row. Are we going to make a new const something? Nope. We're going to jump right into our if. We don't need a const because all of our data that we're looking for is up in our board. Okay. I'm be quiet now. So we go row, <laughs> row by row again? Yep. So we're going to start by saying, let's look at our map and come up with a plan of attack. So let's say we're going to check for any, any block in this column first. So we're going to say check 0, 0, and 0, 1. And if those two are in there, that means if they play 0, 2, they're going to win. So that's where we need to start. So we're going to say if the board at 0, 0, has an X in it and the board in zero one has an X in it, then, hey, the board at zero two is gonna take an O. And we're gonna keep going on that. And we're gonna say, all right, if the board at one zero has an X in it right here, and if one one has an accident, we need to block here. And then we're going to keep going and say, oh, that block is in one, two. And we can make this an else if, right? Because the computer should only be playing once. And then we keep going. We say else if the board at two zero and two one is an X, oops, then block at two, two. Okay, so we're saying we've got the X's here covered. Now we need to move on and say, okay, let's take these two and check for if they can win there. Okay. So, is there any reason why we got rid of the um, set timeout um, when we were done? Uh, up here? That's just because I wanted the computer to play right away. If you didn't want the computer to play right away and think about it for a second, uh, you can put that back in. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we're going to keep going. And now we need to say, all right, let's check if these two have an X, then put an O here. So we're going to keep going. We're going to say, all right, if zero one has an X and zero two has an X, that means zero zero gets the block. Nancy. And we keep going on all of these until we get them done. So we say one, one and one, two, then 
one zero. And then we say if two one and two two has an X, then two O is getting the block. And if all of this, we have to go in and do our columns, but let's just say if, if any of that happens, we found our turn. Otherwise, we haven't found our turn. So just make the computer take a random turn. And because we've already put computer random turn into a function, we can just call that in our computer block or random turn. So let's see how that works. If I go into my code, I still got more to do, but we just said, hey, block if the, their, uh, the human can win over here. So if I say an X here, and it says none of the, the human can't win, so just play something random. Then we come in here and we hit another X, and you notice that O play. And you could say, oh, that's random, but if you keep on doing it, you notice every single time it is now blocking us from winning in that spot. Okay. So we could finish this off very quickly, or we could cheat and go to our uh, outline. And in our outline, we've got a final tic-tac-toe. And it's almost like I prepped all of this work and we can go into, oh, there's one more thing I need to check. So if we play this, uh, let me think about how I can game this to show this concept. Um, okay, if we, uh, Okay, go the other way, right? Then start the right-hand corner. Enter. Uh, so there's there's a condition that I ran into, and I'm trying to remember how I did it. Um, where what happens is, let's say the computer. Oh, those are both X. There was something that I had to do and say, check to make sure. Come on, prettier, help me out here. <laughs> ah, that's what it was. Okay. So uh, I play here and I play here and the computer blocks me, right? And so we think, all right, now we're all set. I'm going to play here. Well, I've played three times. Why hasn't the computer played? Oh. Two. One. Any guesses on that? The computer won. Computer hasn't won. Where does the computer have three in a row? Well, after you played your third time, that open spot gives them a win. Then why haven't they played it? Did it, make did it go back in the same spot again? It's exactly what it did. We played, and it said, okay, now look at the board. If, uh, if oh. the board at one zero has an X in it, it does right here. And if one one has an X in it, then go ahead and place an O back in its spot. Oh. So what we need to do is we need to modify these if statements and say, hey, check to make sure that you haven't already blocked them in that spot. So what we're doing is we're saying, what we need to do is we need to say, check to see if zero zero has an X and if zero one has an X. So if the player has played here and here, then what we need to check is make sure that before we put that O in there, make sure you haven't already blocked them in that spot yet. So this is the spot that we need to block them, zero two but we need to check to make sure that it is not equal to O because if it is equal to O, we've already blocked them there and we need to check for another spot. So we would keep on going here, right? We're saying, hey, now check one zero, which is gonna be right here and one one, which is gonna be right here and block them in, in one two, which is right here 
unless one two already has an O in it, at which point we've already blocked that. <laughs> so it is maddening to code all of these out because we have to check every single position. So I'm gonna go in my week nine day three outline, I've got a link to the final tic-tac-toe. If we go to that final tic-tac-toe, you see all of my code here. By the way, there is a download zip here. So if you ever need this as a starting point uh, for any of the days, you can just go in and, and download it from right out there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and our check game status should be identical to ours, but for the um, computer block or random, I call it move or turn, I've got all of my if statements already written out here. And I added comments to each one of them to talk about, hey, where is that block going to go? What is What are we checking for? The row is the first one, and then the column is the second word that comes after it. So this is all of the blocking code. Um, and it takes from here all the way up until whoop, here all the way up. Come on, highlight. Okay, it's going to fight me. From line 160 all the way down to, one, to 219, that has to check all of the rows. Then from 220 all the way down until the 280, that's what it takes to check all the columns. And then I left myself a to do in here. And that's pretty common syntax to say like, hey, I need to come back to this. I'm not fully done with it, but I need to move on to the next section. So I left a little to do in here that said, hey, I didn't check for diagonal wins. So that would be a whole nother section of the if statement. Mm -hmm. So for once, I'm actually gonna tell you it is okay to copy this. Oh, thank the Lord Jesus. I am going to, Copy, you should struggle on it a little bit. You should get the first couple if statements working. And then after you have, you should be able to copy from line uh, 160 all the way down to 286. And we're going to copy that and paste it in from 79 to 61. So basically everything inside our computer block or random turn is going to get the code that I've already written out for everything. Okay, and that's on the outline. That is linked to the outline in my final tic-tac-toe. Okay. So let's test and make sure it's working. So I'm, I'm gonna actually try and win. And we get computer move random is not defined. That is because I called it computer random turn. So what we need line to did you paste that code in? Um, I pasted it in computer block or random turn. Thank you. So I need to make sure things are lining up and that's one downside of my copy and paste. I called it in my code here, computer move random. But in my code that I did in class, I called it computer random turn. So I'm just gonna copy that computer random term and then down at the bottom, I've got a computer move random. So I'm gonna paste that in there and now it should be working. So other than diagonal wins, we should be able to test this and be blocked every time. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here. It blocked me with the X. Okay, now I'm gonna go here and it blocked me with that there. I'm gonna go here to block the computer and now O has won in that direction. Okay, so I'm going to test again. I'm going to say I'm going for the bottom. Now I got blocked there. Now I'm going to go for my top row and I'm going to play here. And now X is one because I got the diagonals. So let's take a break there and make sure everyone is caught up. You know, once a night, I have this horrible feeling where I get like 20 minutes into after the break, and then I go, am I recording? Oh my God, did I stop? Did, am I not recording? And then I look down and I see the little red light. I'm like, oh, I remembered after the break. Okay, so your lines that I, let me just look at the question before I 
uh, what lines are we copying? We are copying in the tic-tac-toe everything from 286 all the way up until 160. We're basically copying everything inside of our computer block or random move function. So we're copying 160 all the way down to 286. And then we are coming into back into our code and we are replacing everything inside of our computer block or a random turn. So after this curly brace, we're pasting here and making sure that everything down to here is what's pasted in. And then we need to make sure that this last else statement says computer random turn, because that computer random term has to match our computer random turn up here. Okay, let me go back. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ask you to repeat that one more time. Okay, <laughs> one more time. We are cheating and taking our computer random turn from my final code. So we're gonna go to the outline. Why do I say block or remove? Or block or random move? So we're gonna go to our final tic-tac-toe and I'm gonna scroll down until I find my... Uh, 160 right. and I'm starting, I'm trying to find that last curling, the last curly brace. So if we go all the way down, that's on 287. Yeah. So that means I need 286 all the way up until 160. Okay. Yes, yes. Yep. So what we did is we came back into our code and all of the else ifs are going to go in computer block or random turn. This curly brace right after it, we should paste in there and that should paste all the way down until 188 on mine. And then the last step, once we get that pasted in, make sure you have your curly brace that's yellow because that's what's closing out the function itself. We're taking what's inside of the function and replacing everything inside of that function into here. We are then, uh, if you look at my code, you see that I call at the end of all of this computer move random, but computer move random is not what we had it called in our code our code called a computer random turn. So that's what we need to rename that last else statement to say computer random turn. And once we get all of that done, we should be able to go and play our game. And other than diagonals, the computer should block us every time. Okay. I had an extra parenthesis somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> Try and find it. If you get stuck, let me know. We can screen share through it. Thank you. Maybe I should just get rid of it. <laughs> Stephanie, go ahead and share. Um. I, I feel like I deleted something I shouldn't have because my 190 looks different than yours. Um, you may have just had it in the wrong order. Let's go to the browser, save, and then let's go to the browser and see what's happening. Why is my chat change status? Not blue. Okay, so you got check game status is not defined on 212. So let's look at 212. Um, okay, so you've got a check game status going on there. That actually isn't a problem. So let's scroll up and let's go find where we've got check game status. This game sucks. Uh, I don't see it. Did that accidentally get deleted maybe? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what, <laughs> what I'm supposed to be copying and pasting here. 
I think you accidentally, instead of getting rid of the the partial one that we had to block, I think you pasted that on top of your check game status by accident. So you should have 190 on my code all the way down to wherever that function ends before your button clicked. Gotcha. Mine still be freezing. Okay. Mine still freezing. Do that less than nine. Minutes. Yep. Stephanie, are you good to work on that? But yeah. Thank okay. you. Um, just because my code is um, a little bit different than yours, is that because it's not spaced in one of the wrong <laughs> Okay. Yep. Go ahead and share. <laughs> um, okay. Mine still freezes after. Um... Okay, we'll come to you next. <laughs> okay, so do you have an error in your browser? Um, no, I don't. Let me try that. I don't know where to check that. Oh, the 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 computer block or random is on 103. It's not the same. Yep. So down at 103, you got that whole computer block or random. But right now, you're only checking for a couple rows, right, to see if you should block there. But there are a lot more spots you need to check, which is why we went to my final version and just copied and pasted. Oh, so I still it. have to copy things like this. But 104 down to 118 is going to get replaced with my copy. Yep. I mean, unless you want to spend 30 minutes and go crazy like I did to check each one of those spots, at which point you're welcome to keep going manually. No. <laughs> no thanks. But after I do that, Random copy. Where do I put computer random? You replace the else that you copied and pasted in with the computer random term. Wait, I'm not sure. Mom. <laughs> when you paste the code, that last else statement isn't going to oh. say computer random turn. It's going to say computer move random or oh. something like that. So you're going to take whatever is in there and replace that with computer random term. You can share mine too at some point. Uh, I don't see anyone else, so go for Me. it. I'm coming back to you. <laughs> well, I don't have any problems. But. Uh, um, yeah. If so, uh, what happened? Um, oh. 99. You see, oh, um, so much more. So it's not letting me win all the time, <laughs> even though I won. Um, can I see what's happening in your browser? I'll just swing it over. Hold on. Our browser, browser, browser. All right. Uh, are you only sharing in Zoom that one window? Yeah. <laughs> Um, try this again. Test up. Um, test up. All right. So I've won already, as you can see. Okay. So um, refresh it, maybe. It's going to make me a liar. Uh, you might be stuck in an infinite loop. Uh, yeah, but before it, it still would. Uh, I need to shut it down. Yeah. All right. And go back. This is my. Code. This is my goal, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I went into the Canvas module. Larry, you're taking up all the time. He added this week. I'm missing the curly left. I just looked at the one of those. Yeah. Oh, 
with the computer. <laughs> computer. Not computer. Right. Okay. So one is not trying to block me. I won. Okay. And it still let me go. Okay, so let's go, let's figure out your block first, because that's where it went wrong first, right? So go to your button click, because that's what kicks everything off. Button click. I think it, well, on mine, it's at the bottom. It's the very last one. Right. Okay, so we place our X's, all of that's fine. Then after we place our X, we say check game status. And if there's a game winner, then show that they won. Otherwise, computer make a random turn. Do we want the computer to make a random turn at that point? We want to block. So what did we call the function to block them instead of random? Computer block force. Yep. And now your parentheses there. And that may fix a lot of your problems because we were just telling the computer, hey, still take a random turn. Okay. Well, now you're winning, which is good. But I won before, but in certain instances, it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't win. So. Okay. So let's go to your block code and figure out why. Oh, it did. We haven't done diagonals in our block code, oh, so yeah. it will always let you win on a diagonal. No. We haven't coded out. Up and down. No, that last one you run on a diagonal. Yeah, try up and down now. Try up and down now. Okay. So that still isn't working. It went to a zero at the oh. bottom. Okay, so let's look at your computer block or random turn. Oh, you know, I don't have that answer. So that's one thing. Okay. So that could be doing it. Yep. It takes all of those pieces to make the computer block you at the right spot. So it is 817, and I don't want to dive into a more complex algorithm that is using loops yet. So we're going to call it here for the night. I'm, I'm going to stick around for the next 12 minutes at least and help you guys get caught up. But this is where we're going to call it. And then we're going to dive into making our code a little bit more efficient and refactoring it tomorrow. Question. Yep. So I'm going to stop the recording here because I don't think you guys want to see the suffering uh, replay.